It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine, the show where athletes double as travel agents. We did get word that a famous Brazilian football star, Rivaldo, who is hugely famous, did make some very controversial comments. Rivaldo has called on tourists not to travel to Rio de Janeiro for the Olympic Games. And what he said is international visitors should stay away from the Olympic Games. They'll be putting their lives at risk if they do come. Uh, I'm not going. I am your host, Stimulator, and 10 years ago, left this worldwide. We're celebrating the so called pink tide that was sweeping across Latin America. Like the commie dominion effect nightmares that keep Henry Kissinger up at night. In country after country, socialist heads of state were elected into office, promising to break their countries free from the shackles of the IMF and to slap down the corrupt local motherfucking elite, who for decades had grown accustomed to treating national economies like their own personal fucking piggy banks. In many ways, this gauchismo was fueled by the explosive growth of militant social movements comprised of a dynamic mix of urban pros, landless peasants, and indigenous peeps. But while it's undeniable that the past 10 years has witnessed important gains in the region, from declining rates of poverty and illiteracy to massive increases in social spending, the reality is that this experiment in socialism for the 21st century was still capitalist as fuck and largely financed by the historic high price of oil and other export commodities. And now that the party's over, the pendulum is starting to swing back to the right, while W and his batshit cabal of neocon advisors were too distracted by their crazy fucking obsession with bombing the Middle East into freedom, the Obama administration has quietly been hard at work, reasserting the Monroe Doctrine of American Hemispheric Dominance, from the Hillary orchestrated coup d'etat in Honduras in 2009, to Obama's historic meeting with Raul Castro to help open Cuba's proud and culturally rich nation to the plague of American tourists, the United Snakes sits poised and ready to capitalize on the economic and political chaos currently destabilizing the region. The point is the United States will not be imprisoned by the past. And at the top of their list is Venezuela, the oil-rich nation currently racked by hyperinflation, shortages of food and basic goods, in an energy crisis that has given rise to daily rolling blackouts, scenes of mass looting, and violent street clashes between opponents and supporters of President Nicolas Maduro have American policymakers and oil companies salivating at the prospect of imminent state collapse. For his part, Maduro has declared a state of emergency and has given a tentative green light for workers to start expropriating closed factories in a desperate effort to shore up his declining support and kickstart the economy. Maduro is facing the prospect of a recall referendum, a constitutional process which he has decried as a Washington back coup d'etat, echoing the language of his former fellow comrade in chief, Dilma Rousseff, who was suspended from office following an impeachment vote in Brazil's Senate on May 12th. I have not committed any crime under the Constitution and law to justify an interruption to my mandate. To condemn someone for a crime that they did not commit is the greatest violence that can be committed against any person. Leftists and so-called progressives around the world have faithfully echoed the Telesur line, describing the opposition's power graph in Brazil as a coup or gold impeachment. But many of the peeps taken to Facebook to violently decry this gross breach of democratic process seem perfectly fucking content to ignore the fact that Dilma had become a widely hated figure with an approval rating of just 9 fucking percent and millions of peeps regularly taken to the streets to demand her resignation or that she was president of the board of directors of the state oil company Petrobras while upwards of 33 billion fucking dollars was lost to the corruption in a giant fucking scandal that implicated more than half of the country's sitting politicians, including many members of her own party, or the inconveniently neoliberal character of her government itself, which oversaw the violent pacification of the country's favelas by heavily militarized BOPE pigs and the massive waste of money spent on useless fucking infrastructure to prepare the country to play host to the World Cup in 2014 and the five cockroaches of death this summer which, by the way, look like they're slated to be an epic fucking disaster. So while it's true that the old guard of Latin American politics are corrupt, neoliberal pieces of shit in the pocket of Uncle Sam, 
It's also a long time past due that leftist commentators go over their moralistic and hypocritical rhetoric of democracy and realize that class war is a grueling process and that the impetus for revolutionary transformation comes from below, not from top-down state structures, no matter how revolutionary their leaders claim to be. El martillo impacta la aguja, la explosión de la pólvora con fuerza empuja, movimiento de rotación y traslación, sale la bala arrojada fuera del cañón.